Today, we're going to be looking at air quality monitor sensors. Right now, Purple Air is probably the cheapest air quality monitor that you can buy. The cheapest one you can buy is 210. One of the most annoying thing about these sensors is that they report to the cloud. That's really annoying because you need the internet to actually read the measurements that's actually right next to you. Luckily, their components are pretty much open standard, meaning that you can buy it and then build it yourself. So here's one of the components that we're going to be looking at, PMS5003. And guess what? Amazon has it. Here's one, PMS5003. If you buy in bulk like me, you can get it as cheap as $20 per unit. While we're looking at air quality, we might as well measure temperature and humidity. So this is the module that I got. And yep, I bought it in bulk as well. Believe it or not, I'm actually an engineer that monitor air quality. Our instruments are from Teledyne and it costs upward of $3,000. And we're always calibrating them to make sure that they're working at their optimal performance. These air quality monitor are not calibrated. Well, you know what? I should take it back. They are probably calibrated when they were shipped, but after shipment, they're never calibrated ever again. So that's why it's hard to say how accurate they are after a year or two. And when we're building our own sensor, it's hard to say that they were ever calibrated at all. But what's important is that you know what the average is versus when something goes up and spike all the way up. Building your own air quality sensor is actually pretty straightforward. This is the website I went to for instruction, peterbrinkman.com. If you just want to build your own air monitoring, this is all of the tools that you'll need. Here's the uh, sensor itself. Here are some DuPont connectors. Here's a DuPont crimper. This is the chip that will interface with the monitor and onto your Wi-Fi network, the Node MCU, electrical pliers, the 5 volt power brick, and finally, a micro USB cable. In my house, I have added the temperature and humidity sensor, so you can see it right here. There's the Node MCU, and here's the uh, air monitoring device. I could 3D print a nice box and put everything in, but I was so lazy, I didn't want to do anything fancy. I just put everything into this uh, plastic packaging box that had screws in it. Everything is going to be hidden on top of a bookshelf, so it doesn't really matter. I don't need it to be nice and pretty. I just need everything to be working. Here's how large it is compared to a uh, Samsung Note. So this is how you'll be wiring everything together. Here's a schematics of the Note MCU. The sensor itself has eight wiring. We only need five. Starting from the top, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first pin is going to go into V in which is right here on a Node MCU. The second pin goes to the ground, which is right here. Pin number three goes to D3, which is right here. Pin number four is D6. Pin number five is D7. So everything that's labeled with the red arrows are for the sensor. Meanwhile, everything that's labeled with the green arrow is for the uh, temperature humidity sensor. So here we go. This is the 3.3 uh, volt. This one is for the ground. SDA and SCL goes to here, D1 and D2. It's pretty straightforward, right? To make all of these connections, you'll definitely need the DuPont crimp and the DuPont connections that I showed you earlier. Incorporating everything into Home Assistant, you'll need ESP Home. I've shown you an instruction on, on how to use ESP Home to program a uh, IR receiver transmitter earlier, but here's a quick overview. You have your typical header with the name and the platform, which is the Node MCU 8266. Your Wi-Fi credentials into your local Wi-Fi network. I'm giving mine a static IP address. Here's all of my network information, including the gateway, the subnet, and the DNS. So all of this top part is pretty much standard. This whole bottom part is for the sensor as well as for the humidity and temperature. Here's the platform that we'll be using, the type, the name, you can name it whatever you want. I have a bunch of sensors, so I'm naming this one as the second floor. For the temperature, humidity, this is the platform. We're connecting it on the D4. Name it whatever you want again. Here, we're using it for the second floor. I don't need it to update every second. It will be updating it just 20 seconds. 
In order to keep the monitor working as long as possible, we're going to use it every two minutes. So that's why there's a switch and it's going to turn itself on every two minutes. Once you have all of your code ready, go ahead and flash it to the Node MCU. If you want to know how to do that, go ahead and follow my uh, IR transmitter receiver video. Once you flash the chip and add it into Home Assistant integration, this is what it should look like. On the right hand side, it's just the bare minimum. On the left hand side, you can see a really nice graph using Grafana. One of the reasons why I'm using this monitoring is because I have the laser engraver and 3D printer. And I'm really curious whether that would affect the air quality at all. Hopefully nothing bad will happen to my uh, air quality, but you never know. So that's why you gotta have data to back it up. Let me know how you intend to use your air quality monitor. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel and thanks for watching.